But he got a flag down. Oofside. Everyone but the center. Offense. Welcome to Oofsides. Week two's in the books. How you boys doing? I'm happy. Happy. Hey, all of our teams won this week, actually. Now that I think about it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. How about Good that? week. Yeah. I Let's have a talk feeling- about it. I had to re- I had to look at my notes to see which fan base Matt was uh, supporting. So, oh my god! Well, I mean, one team lost, which means America wins. Uh, <laughs> but we'll get there. Uh, but yeah, I was gonna say this might be a rare occasion where all three of our teams win on the same week. So, let's, let's and so did Jax, and he's not even here. Yeah, a rare Jack non-appearance after a Bills win. Yeah. Rare Jack W. Yeah. Anyway, uh, speaking of rare W's, let's just get right into this. Uh, the Dolphins, or sorry, not the Dolphins. Uh, wow, okay, I just screwed that segue up because it's not a rare win for the Char- or for the Chiefs. Uh, anyway, the Chiefs beat the Chargers 27-24 uh, in classic Chargers fashion. Um, they really let that one get away. Yep. Uh, yeah. I was listening to this game on the radio because I was uh, so Thursday nights. I typically work and just listening to how the Chargers were just finding ways to lose that game. As per usual, but, you know. They had two or three dropped interceptions. They had one that was overturned, which could go either way. And they had another one that was negated by penalty. And still, they were up 10 coming out of halftime. Or no, deep into the third quarter, actually. Um, and then uh, the Chiefs just kind of hit their stride, and the Chargers kind of couldn't do anything about it. Um, and then still down, I believe, seven towards the end of that game. Um, the Chargers drive downfield, and Gerald Everett has like a 60-yard run, and he's gassed, and he's trying to get off the field, and they're running up-tempo for some reason. And so Everett just kind of quarter asses his route and Herbert throws it to him and it gets picked by a sixth round rookie by the name of, let me get his name here. Jalen, or sorry, seventh round rookie, Jalen Watson, who takes it 99 yards to the house. And that was pretty much it. <laughs> I I just don't understand what the up, up tempo uh, choice was. I mean, obviously like that can be a very good up tempo offense, but they had to be seeing how much trouble Everett was getting around. Of course, he's going to be gassed after such a long run like that. Like let him come off the field and put, you know, Donald, Donald Parham or whoever the tight end you need into the game. Like there was no reason to keep him in there again. Yeah. It cost him. Like I get it from a scheming standpoint that you're trying to keep the chiefs defense on their toes, but it's like, if you can see that Everett's trying to get out of the game, maybe don't throw to that side of the field. Maybe audible to play Justin, you know, and I, like and Everett's job on that play was to clear out the right side of the end zone so he could hit the receiver who's over there. But then it just like just everything went wrong on that play. So, And unfortunately, that wasn't the end of the Chargers, I guess, struggles in this game, because then Herbert lands on somebody's helmet and takes a shot to the ribs and is in pain for like the next 10 plays. Um so hopefully that's nothing too severe, but it did not look good in the moment. And he still prayed or played pretty solidly after that, too. He had that big drive when they were down by 10 after the pick six. He drove him down to the field and got that garbage time touchdown. Like, he still looked good despite that injury, but you could also clearly tell that it was really hurting him. So hopefully, I, th- I think they said it was a bruised rib, maybe, or something like that. Hopefully it heals up pretty quick, but... It was, not I ideal. Believe, like bruised rib cartilage, I think is what they said, which is I didn't even know you had rib cartilage, first off. I think they're just making up words at this point. Yeah. So uh hopefully the Chargers doctor doesn't puncture his lung like the last time one of their quarterbacks had a rib injury. Yeah, yeah more on that, that later. later. <laughs> yeah, more on that later. <laughs> um <clears throat> the craziest thing about this is while I was watching it. Um, there's the play. It was like third and one and Herbert starts to run. And then just like, you saw him like start to limp and just chuck it into the stands. He was like, nah, I'm not running for it. Cause he was like, if he slides, it's probably going to hurt. And if he gets blown up trying to get it, he's going to get hurt. And at that point I was like, get him out of the game. It's week two. You don't want to lose him for the year. And then on the very next play, he throws like a 40 yard dart to get a first down. And I was like, well, never mind. <laughs> 
Um, uh, one of the other great plays from this game was uh, oh my gosh, who was it? It was their safety. Uh, drawn up Derwin James when he just straight up like suplex Travis Kelsey on the goal line. Oh uh, yeah, that was awesome too. Um, but unfortunately, Charger's gonna charge her. Uh, they per usual. Yeah, they consistently find ways to lose games that they should win. Unfortunately. And especially with this division race, like you need this win against the Chiefs because it's probably going to come down to a tiebreaker if you're both as good as you think you are. So, and Mahomes as a starter is like I think twenty two and five or something like that now against division opponents, and like with how good he is, like you can you need to take every opportunity you get to take him down in a game, and if you don't, you're going to be way behind the eight ball, and and then you're going to pay very hard for to climb out of that hole. Season. So now you're probably gonna have to go on the road for the playoffs if you get there. So uh, that was that. Speaking of going on the road for the playoffs, more than likely the Dolphins and Ravens showed down in. I wouldn't say it was the the quarterback battle we weren't expecting, but I don't think anybody had penciled in Tua Tungavailoa for uh, 469 yards and six touchdowns in a crazy ass comeback against the Ravens. I think the stat that blows me away as well is that with the six touchdown game, every other quarterback that has one has a Super Bowl ring. So, I uh, is very early for the Dolphins, but Tua finally looked like what he should be looking like as a quarterback. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, he he had the two picks, but he recovered. Yeah. And those were and those easily. were yeah, and those were pretty early in the game, and the Ravens had every bit to to you know, get away from them in this game. Uh, but the fourth quarter, they just came to life. And yep. they're two massive offensive weapons in the form of Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddell uh, helped carry this team <laughs> to uh, <laughs> I mean, quite they, a... They yeah. both had over 150 yards and two touchdowns apiece. And, like, we were just talking about the Chiefs, and obviously they're still really, really good without Tyreek Hill, but watching the Dolphins on Sunday, it made me think again, why did the Chiefs trade him, especially to a conference opponent? Yeah, I think to or not to I think Tyreek wanted out. I think I think he requested the trade. But uh, you, you gotta flip him to an NFC team if you can help yeah. it. Like you, you, like with a team that already had as much potential as the Dolphins did before that trade happened. Like, you're just shooting yourself in the foot doing that because that's probably going to be, at some point, a playoff your, matchup. Your matchup. He yeah, can matchup, easily yeah. be the difference yeah. in who wins that game. I guess I, the way I could see it is, is similar to when the Eagles traded Donovan McNabb was basically them saying, we're not scared of you. I mean, don't get me wrong, we respect you, but we're not scared of playing you. So I guess that's kind of what it is. Um, but yeah, it's just like a baffling trade. It it, I just remember when it sent shockwaves through the, the entire league. Um, but yeah, I think Tua, it was more shocking than the Wilson deal, to be honest with you. Oh, yeah, yeah, because everybody knew Russell Wilson wanted out. Like, he had been hinting at it for, like, a year and a half at that point. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, Tua is the first Dolphins quarterback to pass for six touchdowns since Dan Marino in 1986. Um, and then before that, the only other guy on that list for Dolphins QBs is Bob Greasy. So, uh, what a kind of, list. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. Up thirty-five, fourteen, going into the fourth quarter, and then the Ra the Dolphins' offense just got hot. Um, it was unbelievable. So, and this is going to be a huge game in the AFC playoff picture because at this point the Ravens look like they are the class of the AFC North. But this is a huge win for the Dolphins because they are trying to prove that they're for real and they need to stay afloat in you know, the AFC playoff picture, and this is a huge tiebreaker to have already in your pocket. Yeah, and when you're, your contender in the division is the Bills, and there's still, like, even with how good they played offensively these first two weeks, they still could finish second in the division and play that wild card game. So... Oh, yeah. Gotta yeah. say, uh, as well, Mike McDaniel's looking like a pretty good yeah. Coach of the Year candidate already, because that team is looking really really strong with him now like oh. i think they'd be playing similarly if if brian flores was still there but i think they hit a home run with this hire so far oh yeah also he's very funny uh yeah 
<laughs> he had a quote this week where he was talking about their their performance and he was mentioning how week one, you know, they their offense played really well, but he had mentioned he's like, I can't wait for us to play a game with some adversity and then and then he followed up and he's like, I guess they took that a little too literally. <laughs> <laughs> so Or did they ever? Yeah. So and- that was that was uh it's pretty cool. <laughs> But That's... now the question is, how long will he keep his nuts in a wheelbarrow? Yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting a little inconvenient at this point. So, yeah, it's got to be a pain in the ass wheeling that well, around. Yeah. Should we uh, segue this game uh, late comeback to another interesting yeah. late comeback Absolutely. game? <laughs> this <laughs> one, this one I don't know funnier. which one. Yeah, like the Dolphins one, at least, like, oh, they went out and like earned it. But they did it over the course of a quarter. Yeah. yeah, they did it over the course of a whole quarter. This one, uh, being the Jets and the Browns, <laughs> happened over the course of what two minutes? Uh, this last, was such a, a minute fifty-five game. Yeah. Broadway Joe Flacco, baby. <laughs> Joe, I just yeah. want to apologize for everything that we've said about you. Uh, thank you for crushing the Browns' hopes and dreams for me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because the Browns had every like every opportunity to win this game and tell what they did in the final two minutes. Yeah, they gave up a touchdown and just decided to just be scared on the hot side. The thing that sticks with me is why did Nick Chubb not go down? The, oh, that's yeah. the thing is he's done it before where he's like gone down to you know make sure they don't score again. It reminds me of when the Falcons were playing the Lions two years ago and Todd Grilly tried to stop and fell into the end zone by accident. And then Matthew Stafford said, hey, watch this, and took the Lions all the way down the field and won the game for him. And sure enough, Joe Flacco said, oh, I can do that too. And they went out and did it. Yeah, because I think the other game that Nick Chubb, uh, I think it was Texans and Browns, yeah. where it was like a 10-7 game and he went out of bounds to like basically not give them the ball back, even if they scored. So, I just I don't know why he wasn't thinking that either for this one. So the I think the thing that stood out most to me is like there's been a sense of arrogance to Cleveland in the off season. Oh, for um, sure, for a number of reasons. But you know, like one of their player, I can't remember who it was one of their O linemen said something about like, oh man, it always feels like Cleveland versus the world, and now it especially feels like it. And it's like, yeah, I wonder why. Um, but it might the, just be a reason for that. The first touchdown where Corey Davis just smokes Denzel Ward. Denzel Ward straight up gave up on that play. When Corey Davis catches the ball, Ward is jogging. Because they're just like, oh, whatever, we're up two touchdowns. It doesn't matter. And then they give up the onside kick recovery. And then it was on from there. <laughs> uh, Gotta say, yeah. Garrett oh. Wilson might have been the steal of this draft. Oh, dude. For oh, real. yeah. He, he looked stepped up in a big really, way. Really good on Sunday. Oh yeah. Um Sauce Gardner still very good. Um I do love how on Google he is officially listed as Sauce and not um a mod. So <laughs> I think his Wikipedia yeah. page has him as Sauce Gardner too. Yeah. Uh but yeah, that the rules. Browns scored a touchdown to uh to go up thirteen points with a minute fifty five left and then missed the extra point. And then uh, it was funny because everybody was praising Cade York for having ice in his veins last week. And then he misses the most important extra point. Didn't know it at the time, but then they end up losing by that one point. So same old brand of kicking in the jets. I don't know how many of you guys saw that a tweet that came out, but apparently there were eight different kickers that started on Sunday that at one point played for the jets. Oh yeah. I, I did see it. that. <laughs> Sounds yeah, because well, yeah, isn't Greg Zerline their their kicker or their yeah, right now or something? Yeah, Nick Folk who played for the Patriots, Chase McLaughlin played for the Colts, Randy Bullock I think was on Tennessee, Matt Amendola played for Kansas City because Bucker was hurt, Brett yeah. Maher on the Cowboys, Kyra Santos I think on the Bears, Bears maybe, Eddie Pinheiro, I f- I think he's on the Panthers now, Jason Myers in Miami and Greg Zerline. That is and absurd. all of them have played for the Jets. <laughs> Jets football, baby. Yeah. But 
huge win for the Jets because they do fancy themselves as a wild card team this year. So uh, yeah. I don't know about a wild card team, but I, maybe I they think, won't be as yeah. bad as people think. Yeah. Yeah, I think that they're obviously probably a quarterback or in a few key pieces away from being a solid contender because they have the wide receiver pieces for sure. Oh, yeah. So And they'll probably still finish in last place because of the teams that they're playing with. But, you know, maybe this year there'll be a seven or eight win last place team instead they're... of a three win last place team. Yeah. I see them as the Jaguars of this division. Like, they could be frisky and win some games, but don't expect too much. <laughs> yeah. Um. I will say that uh, we'll get to the Jags. Uh, oh yeah, because uh, <laughs> but before that, we got to get to the other uh, kitty team that did well this yeah. week. Uh, are the Lions good? <laughs> I have many questions with this. <laughs> Their offense has been killing it. Uh, uh, I think it's in like the last five games they've scored thirty plus points. I think it's last three, but uh, but it's yeah. the first time they've done it since like the fifties, which. When they won the NFL championship. Yeah, which is kind of a long time ago. Um, And shout out to Joe for pestering us to give that information to you guys. I Uh, love how Joe acts like we don't constantly (laughs) suck off Dan Campbell every time we talk. Yeah, because Dan Campbell football is the football. I don't want you guys to be mean about Dan Campbell. I'm like, have you listened to the show? (laughs) Also, for what it's worth, uh, the last time that happened in the 50s, the president was Harry Truman. (laughs) So yeah. that that's how long ago that was. But to, to, to cap off, though, like from this game, just the trio of quarterbacks that lead the league in passing yards of the first two weeks of the season. Tua Tagovailoa is first in that category. Carson Wentz for the Commanders is second. And Joe Flacco's third. So absurd. Through the first two weeks, it's those three who were probably like the three that people would have expected to be at the bottom of that list in the first two weeks, Joe but Flacco they're at the top. Supposed to be starting. Yeah. He's a backup. Well, that's oh, the thing is we played some weird football these first two weeks. Like there's like other, other than like a, like probably like a amount you could put on one hand. Like there's been a bunch of teams that have just not played up to their potential. Oh, absolutely. and then there's some that have played over that potential. Like yeah. the, definitely like, the lions yeah. of that group. Oh, yeah, and I've been saying, like, throughout the offseason, I think the Lions can win, like, seven games. But at this point, I'm like, the NFC's not looking very strong right now. Like, I, I genuinely think they could slip in as a wild card right now at, like, nine and eight. I I'm could see it, it at this point. Yeah. Um, yeah Jared and honestly... Goff- oh, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, you- <laughs> <laughs> Son of a bitch. Now, uh, I was going to say, I think the Commanders could be in that same boat where, like, you maybe even go eight and nine. That might even be enough with how it's looked so far. Oh yeah. Um, Amon Ross St. Brown looks like an absolute star. Uh, he is that guy receiving and rushing Jared Goff. As it turns out is still a pretty good quarterback. Um, and uh, yeah, they shut out the, the commies 22, nothing at halftime. And then Washington, came back in the second half, but it was like every time they score, the Lions just go right back down and score again to neutralize it. So, um, and if the, like, I was thinking last week, if they can get some competent defensive play, then they can easily keep up with, with just about anybody on the offensive side of the ball. And they, like I said, they blanked the commanders for the first half. Not only that, but they got a, uh, got a safety alert in the first half too. Yeah. So, Aiden, Aiden Hutchinson, Hutchinson looked good too. I was gonna say he is the real deal. Five tackles, three sacks. Um, yeah, that dude's gonna be a star. Um, yeah, and the Lions are now one and one. They're now in a four-way tie for the division lead. How about that? Hell yeah! Yeah. Speaking of I, uh, another team that has a division lead, what's yeah. up with this next game? <laughs> I just want to say. Uh, <laughs> when we did our, when we did the first episode of the season. I was fully ready to say that the Titans were going to win the AFC South, and then just the way we talked about the Colts, you guys basically gaslit me into picking the Colts, and I just want to say fuck you guys. <laughs> hey, uh, I picked the Titans for what it's worth. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I'm, I'm regretting that choice very much, but I did. Yeah, <laughs> it just it just blows me away that. With the offensive weapons that you have as the Colts, you've scored 20 points between your crappy division opponents. 
in the I first think, two weeks. I, I think just, we forgot to acknowledge that they don't really have any receivers. Well, yeah, uh, and their main receiver was out for this game. Yeah, and Michael yeah, but Pittman you're still Jr. getting blanked by a team that won three games last year. Yeah, and like Matt this Ryan, this is the only shutout of the season so far. Matt Ryan, the last two or three years, we've been like, man, I feel like he could still play. Maybe he can't, because. <laughs> This was bad. I mean, he was I bad mean, last week, but this one was especially bad. Yeah, he at least threw for like 300-something yards last week, but this week, holy shit, man. Like, he... he I don't even... I, I, I don't even know how to continue this sentence. Like, how, like, what do you make of this? He looks well, washed. Yeah. I wasn't thinking that this was going to be the game it was, but uh, the first drive for the Colts start... Uh, they drove down a little bit, but then got an interception... Uh, and then you go later in the game, and not only do they throw two, does Matt Ryan throw two more interceptions? They're on back-to-back plays on two different drives. So, and those drives combined for a total of two plays. So, uh, <laughs> I just, and it wasn't just him. I don't think as well because like they just couldn't get anything going. Yeah, Jonathan yeah. Taylor had fifty-four yards on nine carries, so their rushing game wasn't doing much. They didn't really go to him that much, though. I mean, nine carries for the entire game, and he's supposed to be like your superstar running back, where, like, nine for 54, that's six yards a carry. That's really good. Like, they should have gone back to him way more than they did in that game. And what's crazy about that, too, is, you know, most teams will abandon the run if they're playing from behind, but Jonathan Taylor is the type of back that, like, he can drag you out of these holes. Perfect example was that Thursday game against the Patriots last year where Carson oh, yeah. completely melted down and Jonathan Taylor literally carried them in that comeback. Yeah, don't um, remind me of that, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, here's just some numbers, though, for their day. So Matt Ryan was 16 out of 30, a.k.a. one pass over 50% completion rate, 195 yards, three picks. Uh, oh. Sacked five times uh, compared to the zero that they got on Trevor Lawrence, who was 25 of 30, 235, and two touchdowns. Um, James Robin, like the James and, Robinson redemption arc, baby. And I was going to say like their yards per carry aren't great, but that was just because, you know, most of those carries are just coming from, Hey James, don't drop the ball. You know, yeah, we're up 24, I nothing. <laughs> I think that's the key in this game too, is the Jaguars as a team have looked like they've always find a way to have some really sloppy turnovers in a game. And they just didn't do that this week, which is probably why they won. So, it's crazy what having a Super yeah. Bowl winning coach does for yeah, see, It's crazy what happens when you secure the football. <laughs> yeah. I See, I also don't really know what to make of the Colts defense, but Lawrence looked really good, and the offensive line for the Jaguars, which has been a problem for them for a while now, looked really, really good. Oh, yeah. they. Uh, it's all of that shopping that they did in the offseason just to get, you know, oh, maybe yeah, not it's, stars, it's but just... So you just you got to get people in there. Yeah. Um, just new bodies, and they did just that. Filled, yeah, they filled the spots, and now they're assessing what they've got. Some so. other stats on this game, though. Uh, the Jaguars had the game or the ball for almost twice as long as the Colts. The Colts had nine first downs, uh, two for ten on third downs, and zero for two on fourth down. Um, Yikes! Yeah, just an absolute ass whooping. Um, and. Much like I was saying about the Lions, I've been saying that the Jaguars could probably win like seven games this year. And at this point, fuck it. Why not AFC South champions? Well, so, yeah, because they, like you, they, and it's, it's rough to say because even though they lead this division, you look at who is in this division and it's very possible. Oh, yeah. I mean, the Texans they, yeah. are a directionless ship. Um, I mean, Lovey Smith is just like, whatever, coaching football is fun. That's why I'm here. The Colts. Uh, look like their big offseason acquisition is going to be a flop, and the Titans did nothing to. And, yeah, and the Titans can't their issues. So. And the Titans can't that. step up and they can't step up in big games. Yeah. So, yeah, Jaguars maybe. There's a there's a <laughs> this question mark case. is the I mean, and we there's other divisions that like they're they're sloppy as well, but this one really just throws me for a loop because nobody looks like Blake, nobody looks good enough to be that team for the yeah. division. So at this point, like the like Trevor Lawrence, we're finally seeing like good football out of him, which is 
you know, and I mean, nothing's been like Pro Bowl star level, but he's just, he looks like an NFL starter finally. We're like, hey, look, he can do things. And that honestly might be all that's needed to win the South. So. And I think I think a big factor in this game as well is, uh, and we we talk about this a lot when we're talking about Jaguars wins, but uh, when they play at home, and it's like usually like, uh, and I think they beat the the Colts at Jacksonville last year in Week 18. Just correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but, they did, yes. So their their probability of winning against any given opponent goes exponentially up at home just because of you know the humidity and the weather. This is why, like, in the past, we've had teams like, you know, Tom Brady and the Patriots lose in Jacksonville because it's just a different environment. So uh, uh, it's the I'm same reason why. It. Yeah, and to, to bash on Dewey's team some more, it's why they couldn't. the pa- Patriots couldn't win Miami because there's, Thank like, because those three teams <laughs> just, <laughs> like, with Tampa Bay, uh, the Jaguars, and Miami really have an advantage when it comes to their their fields so for reference uh the jaguars have won eight straight against the colts in jacksonville uh yep oh my god was the last one which included a six to nothing win in 2018 love me some portals ball baby yeah <laughs> some bort ball um yeah and that was jaguars colts um let's talk about another low scoring south battle the Tampa well, they might have a bit more tension in it. <laughs> yeah, Tampa Bay Buccaneers go into New Orleans, and for the first time in Brady's Bucks career, they beat the Saints in the regular season, twenty to ten. Uh that was not what this game looked like, though, because it was three nothing at half and three three going into the fourth quarter, and then uh, some sort of altercation between Mike Evans and Marshawn Lattimore uh, set off a. I guess you could say a fight, and uh, then the floodgates opened. So, and both teams semi woke up, whether it was in a good way or a bad way. Yeah. So also not the first time Mike Evans has been ejected from a game for hitting Marshawn Lattimore. Yep. Like those two have some nasty history with each other. They truly and dislike each other, and the pettiness. And more on that later. This, uh, because. The whole incident was sparked off because Bruce Arians was down on the sideline for some reason. Yeah, because he's like a team consultant or yeah. something. Uh, and then, I guess it's an on-field position now. Well, so they asked Todd Bowles about why Bruce Arians was down there, and the Saints didn't give the Buccaneers a, a box for their owner and their and their uh, like GM and everything to go sit in, so they had to be sidelined. Interesting. Yeah. So. He should be down there more often. That was yeah. cool. <laughs> <laughs> I like Bruce Arians. Hey, um, it worked. It's it, it got the Bucks rolling. Yeah. They, they looked dead in the water before that, and they ended up running away with it. So Yeah, and we also got some classic Jameis Winston action. Uh, 25 or 40 for a touchdown and three interceptions. Um, and I think he also got hurt, which is a bummer. But I think he um, played hurt the entire game. Yeah. Um, but... Yeah, this was. I mean, I don't know what it is, but no matter how high powered the Bucks defense or offense is, the Saints have their number on defense usually. I mean, they won a game six nothing last year against them. Um, yeah. After that, the floodgates opened and Brady started doing Brady things. Except, um, you know, they're not going to have Mike Evans. I believe uh, Godwin's hurt. Julio Jones is hurt. So. A little concerned about the Bucks going forward, but big win for them to assert their dominance in this division already. Got over that hump. Brady had still not beaten the Saints in a Tampa uniform in the regular season and finally did it. Yeah. So yeah, but, at the very least, that's got to feel good for him, knowing that he finally got that out of the way. Oh yeah. But I think what the Bucks, the- even though Brady hasn't looked. I wouldn't say great so far. I think the Bucks are already starting to trend towards that, you know, we're going to run away with the division and we're only three weeks into the season kind of thing. Yeah. They've also played two monster defenses the first two weeks. So that might also be a contributing factor. Um, and their defense has given up a combined 13 points in the first two games. Like, that so, defense looks nasty. Um, 
One of the weird things, though, that a lot of people are talking about is, like, obviously Brady's all business during the game, but he looked miserable pre- and post-game. I don't know if anybody else noticed that. He just, like, looked like he was straight up not having a good time. I yeah. feel like maybe there's a part of him that might be regretting coming out of retirement. Maybe he hates his kids and football. <laughs> and the, well, <laughs> I'm just playing so I don't get fined or hurt my kids. Well, there's also all those rumors going around where apparently like him and Giselle have fought a lot recently or they might be living separately or whatever. So maybe this decision is you know, hurting his marriage or something. I don't know, but oh, yeah, cause there it, was that, it could be a couple different things. There was that hiatus he took during training camp, um, as I currently shatter the reality that I was actually not surprised that Brady was back when we recorded the first episode. Um, but he was gone for like that week or two from training camp, and then when he came back, he did you guys ever watch that press conference? I don't know if I ever caught that, but... I don't think I did. It was a Tom Brady that we've never seen before, because he was like... I don't want to say vulnerable, but it was like the most down to earth conversation that I've ever seen Tom Brady have. And he like straight up said when they were asking about his absence and he was like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm 45 years old. I got a lot of shit going on. It was like, Whoa. Okay. Um, and I think like, and there's the rumor going around that this is his last year. And I mean, it would make sense, but it's, it's I feel just, like it has to be. Yeah. There's just some weird vibes going on with Brady right now. And you know, there's the speculation about him and Giselle. Um, yeah, it's it's just weird. And there's that? that other thing where, like, apparently he's getting, like, every Wednesday for the entire season as a personal day off or something now. Yeah. Where may- maybe that was, like, a stipulation for him coming back that was just not ever revealed to the public or something, but... Yeah, and I imagine, because, like... It feels so stupid that we're digging into his personal life like this. Dude's but probably like, in his midlife crisis and is just trying to figure some shit out. Like, but yeah, that, gotta, that happens. He, this is his, what, 23rd season in the NFL? 22nd Third, as a starter? Third, yeah. And, like, he, if he plays... Yeah, he is officially going to play more or spend more of his life playing in the NFL than he hasn't, which is crazy to think about. Um. And so you got it like he has spent all of his 20s and 30s and the first half of his 40s playing football. I mean, not like he spent like 20, 21 to 22 weeks a year, almost every year of his life, you know, not with his family. Like this has been his whole thing. So, like, I would not be surprised if part of this decision has impacted him because he was going to spend that time with his family. And he's like, I got to come back. But now. You know, now he's thinking about like, man, I'm basically just like missing my entire personal life to do this. You know, it's it's weird, too, because, you know, he made the whole the whole like message he released or the statement when he retired was like, you know, I want to spend more time with my family, blah, 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 blah. And then when he released the one that said he was coming back, it was like, you know, I realized that my place is still on the football field. But now I'm listening to all the stuff he's saying now and the way everything's been going on with the rumors. It's like. Did he really want to come back or did he just want to get away from something else that football would have given him ample time to be around? It gets, yeah. I don't know. I mean, he, he hasn't looked bad, but he definitely hasn't looked the way he has in most prior years. Yeah. So a part of that might be the Buxo line being banged up, but I don't know. It's Also, he's 45. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. He's been like, yeah, gotten yeah, the like, shit that's my dad's age for 23 <laughs> like, years. <laughs> yeah, it's weird to talk about it like that. Like, it's any other quarterback in the league. Like, oh, oh, you know, Matt, uh, I don't know, take Mahomes, for example. Like, oh, yeah, he's 25, you know, just having a bad start to the year. But, like, this dude's 45. Like, the fact that he's still playing at all at the level that he is is, like, like appreciate that while you can because there's not going to be very many people that you can sit down – and have a podcast or anything else like this and talk about somebody like that. Yeah. Like that just doesn't happen. Like he is the abnormality of the group. Yeah, for sure. Um, oh, God damn it. I had a point. And I forgot what it was, but yeah. Well, oh, let's yeah, point this like... over to the next game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Whatever. My point doesn't matter. Um, yeah. We'll go. 
So okay. we'll talk about the team that. Uh, how about that? Beat them in two Super Bowls. Uh, yeah. New York Giants. Um, <laughs> Did field not need goal, to do that. Field goal galore <laughs> in this game. Uh, God damn it! <sighs> Fucking Panthers, man. The... <sighs> I'm Matt happy Rule. for. I'm happy for no other reason because I've now correctly predicted the Giants the first two weeks of the season. But looking past that. Why did they hire Ben McAdoo as their offensive coordinator? Oh, my God. What was the thought process behind well, doing that? See, it's, it's because, so, Matt Rule, he, God, what's the word I'm looking for? He uh, he sucks, right? <laughs> and, <laughs> I mean, that's a simple one. But <laughs> I, I didn't realize just how bad Matt Rule's tenure as the Panthers head coach has been. He's won three games in a row, two seasons in a row. And he's won five games in each of those seasons. Um, he's now lost nine games in a row. Uh, uh, they've held the lead, I think, in every single one of those games. And they've lost every single one of them. Oh, my God. And, like, again, Baker Mayfield had a bad day. He started out pretty solidly, and then they just, like, came off the rails as the game went on. But, like, what decided this game... Opening kickoff, Chuba Hubbard fumbles the opening kickoff, and the Giants get a field goal out of it. Second drive, first play, completion to Robbie Anderson. He fumbles it. Giants get a field goal out of that, too. They lost by three points. So, Yeah, and then you look at the fourth quarter, they got two more field goals that were over 50 yards from Graham Gano. Yeah. So, And th- this is the thing I feared when Baker Mayfield got traded to the Panthers. Is I was like, Matt Rule is going to ruin his fucking career. And like Baker obviously hasn't done himself any any help by playing two pretty good halves and then two really shitty halves of football so far this season. Um but like I don't even I don't even know what I'm trying to say. I'm just like disgusted watching the Panthers. They look they're so just they're yeah, they're not playing up to what they should be. But yeah. and they've got bigger games coming up that they uh should be roll. They could be rolling in two and zero, but now we're talking them as an zero and two team. Yeah. So Matt Rule had it going so good when he was at Baylor, and it just blows my mind. Of course, like the prospect of coaching in the NFL is a great one, but why would you leave such a great situation like that, like the one that he had going there, to go to a team that's as run as horribly run as that one is, and then make it worse? Yeah. Like. It, it it almost pains me to watch them because I know that like the talent on that team is there, but they look awful every time they go out on the field. Yep. Dude, and it's like and the the most frustrating thing about it is this is two weeks in a row where they had the lead late and they lost off a field goal. Like they just can't fucking get out of their own way. Ugh. I don't know why I care so much. I guess it's because it's Baker, but God damn it, it pisses me off. They've got to get rid of that entire coaching staff before the season's over. They're going to do a a Jaguars renovation. (laughs) They might as well at this point, because I don't know what else is going to save them. If they lose next week, does Matt Rule get fired? If they start 0 3. Hold on. We got to look at their schedule, because I'm going to do an Austin thing that Austin did last season with. Urban Meyer. I almost it would forgot be his hilarious name if we get this anymore. right again. Um, He's see. already on the hot seat. Who do they play? Let's they play the, the Saints this week. Uh, and then the Cardinals. They play some rough opponents coming up. So I... I... The, the thing I would say I would say after the Broncos Thanksgiving week. I'm going to say that late. That's yeah. my pick, though. I because think, there's a lot of rough games coming up where they'll be like, oh, it's not your fault, and then they'll... But at the same time, they started with easily, for their first two months, their first two games are easily the first, or their easiest, and they lost both of them. Oh, and yeah. you said they've lost nine straight games dating back to last season, right? Uh, let me count just to be sure. One, two, three. Uh, oh, it doesn't scroll all the way back up. Uh, 2021. There's... Uh, let's look at their season last year. They finished five and twelve. Uh, they lost their last seven last year in their first two. So yeah. Um, okay. It, so if we go further so they, back to three, four, five, they've lost fourteen of their last sixteen. Good lord. 
But like now looking at that, like if they lose next week against New Orleans, that'll make it 10 straight losses over two seasons. I could see them like, as early as the 49ers game getting rid like of them, when but... you hit 10 straight losses, whether it's over multiple seasons or the same one like that to me, when you hit double digits has got to be the end of the rope. Like it would not shock me at all if they lose next week, if he wakes up Monday morning and he can't get into his office. For reference, Bill O'Brien was fired four games into 2020. So, were they 0 uh, and 4? They were 0 and 4, um, and that was after he traded DeAndre Hopkins for basically nothing. Um, what was the earliest a coach has been fired into a season? Um, like a recent. Like I'm trying to think if there's any recent examples of a coach being fired only three games in, but with the way they are right now, I can really see it happening. And you know, from the 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 fucking armchair general manager in me, I would do it. Like they've got to go in another direction here. Here's a Reddit thread. Uh, Dennis Allen got fired after. I know Lane Kiffin. I think got fired after four games by the Raiders. Um, who else got co- got fired very early in their seasons? Um, yeah. So Lane Kiffin went four and twelve, and then the next year he got fired after four games. Um, Hugh Jackson got fired I think three games into his third season Um, let's see to be fair I think the Lane Kiffin one specifically was because him and Al Davis just did not like each other well Al Davis was dead when he got oh no no Al Davis is still alive never mind scratch that (laughs) Matthew fire that out or scratch that out Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Matt edit this out yeah um yeah, so, I mean, honestly, at this point, if they... I know the Saints are supposed to be tough, but, like, you're supposed to be a good team, too. And if they, I feel like if they lose to the Cardinals, he's done. Like, I don't see him making it further than that. If they start 0-4, like, he's out the door, I think. I don't know. I, I still think 0-3 is going to be the cutoff again. Like, that's when you hit double-digit losses in a row. Like, that, it can't get worse than that. Okay, so what's our picks, then, for when he's getting uh, drunk? I'm Official going next week. Final picks. All right. So do you say in the Saints? I'll say the pan or the Cardinals game, and I'll take the over and pick 49ers. All right. Let me let me write. And now it's good because if he gets fired after the second Saints game, I'm still technically right. <laughs> <laughs> if he's fired after that one in January of 2023, there's something wrong. Cardinals game, Garrett, and you said the Broncos game. Well, I. If he gets fired quick, it's going to be the 49ers game. Okay. I think it could, if he, if they actually win some games, then I think it could be as late as the Broncos. But 49ers for now. I'll put Broncos late game for your for now. Yeah. And to, to piggyback off of this, we're talking about how long it'll take before Matt Rule gets fired. How long is it till Baker maybe gets benched for Sam Darnold? Dude, I, I couldn't I, ever imagine asking that question, but here we well, are. The problem is Darnold's hurt right now. Oh, is he? Yeah. So, um, I think I think what's going to happen is Matt Rule is going to fire Ben McAdoo before Baker gets benched. Because um, I feel like that was one of my other concerns was, like, if he gets traded to the Panthers, Matt Rule's going to be flailing around trying to save his job, and he's going to bench him for Sam Darnold. Darnold's hurt, so now Matt Rule's fucked. So he can't use Baker as a scapegoat right now. I can't see them firing Ben McAdoo in his first season, though. Like I, I can't see that happening because that, that, that's uh-huh. so rare for a team to fire somebody in their first season. Like Urban Meyer is really the only recent example of that happening. Didn't, didn't the uh, Panthers do that with their OC last year? I, th- I thought that was with Joe Brady, but he had been there a couple seasons. Had he? Uh, I think he was in his second season. Uh, Brady, in January 16, 2020, Brady was hired by the Panthers. Uh, on December 5th, 2021, he was fired by the Panthers. Okay, so yeah, he lasted about a season. Yeah, he got hired like a week after LSU won the Natty. And oh, okay. Lasted until about week five or so of last year. I think, yeah, normally I think that wouldn't be the issue, but I feel like Matt Rule would 100% make... Ben McAdoo the scapegoat and be like, nah, see, it's not my fault. It's McAdoo's fault. And then he gets fired like two weeks later. <laughs> and it's like, what a teams coordinator gets hired. It's just rough all the way around though. Yeah. So 
lots of lots of hot butts in Carolina on coaching wise, but uh, two teams that will not have that situation for a while: the Patriots and Steelers played. Um, and the Patriots come out on top, seventeen to fourteen. Uh, this was a pleasantly out. surprising outcome. Yeah. Now I'm gonna just come out and say now that if TJ Watt was playing, I don't think the Patriots would have won this game. But the fact that they won at all is still a really good momentum boost for them. Oh yeah. Yeah, this was a, a win that they needed, especially after the giant goose that, or egg that they laid in week one. Nelson Aguilar looked really, really good on Sunday, and I never thought I'd ever say that again. But <laughs> yeah, he stepped up he a big. A genuinely big role looked like our Sunday. best receiver. Oh yeah. Um, I think the important thing about this game is uh, Mitch Trubisky is bad. And oh, we well we knew that it was yeah. just he he now has the team around him that he can go and get it done, and uh, I don't know these first two weeks he's been uh. I mean, they obviously won kind of in the messiest way possible in week one. But, uh. Yeah, they had some, like, truly pitiful stats, um, in week one. Um, they were four for 15 on third downs, uh, against the oh. Bengals. Uh, and they punted eight times <laughs> and somehow won. Uh, this week, uh, Trubisky, 21 to 33 for 168 yards. So he's basically just checking it down to his running back every play. Um, uh, and they had, they were eight for 15 on first downs, but sacked three times. He's just like, he just doesn't move the ball down the field. Like he's not turning the ball over a ton. He did throw a pick this week, but like, and especially in a one score game, that's especially killer. But like, is this really how you want to roll? especially with Kenny Pickett looking really exciting in preseason. Like I know he's still young and they probably want him to learn a little more, but like, oh my I was going to say it, it sounded like Mike Tomlin was pretty adamant about him sitting for most of the season and learning behind Trubisky. But like what that tells me is that if Trubisky gets to the point where he's just not getting it done anymore, that they might put Mason Rudolph in before they consider putting in Pickett. Which is scary to think of. But if you take out, Trubisky and put in Rudolph, then you're just doing yourself a disservice. Yeah. I feel like, let's see, what does the Steelers schedule look like? They play the Browns this week and then the Jets. Um, I feel like if they, if they play poorly these two weeks, I think, uh, mm, no, they're not going to throw Kenny Pickett in against the Bills. Okay. That so would be it, wrong. All right. So, may, <laughs> oh, and then they play the Buccaneers the week after that. All right. So Trubisky might be safe for another month. <laughs> Unless they like get him ready for the Jets, I don't know. But it's just hate. I just hate watching Mitch Trubisky play football. Oh my god, I hate watching Mitch Trubisky play football. I don't. I don't really know what else to say about that. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I don't either. Honestly, uh, I didn't really get to watch this game, but uh, I'm very. Very surprised in his outcome. So, yeah. anyway, uh, Patriots yeah. offense, by the way, also still did not look that great. But at least this week it was enough to win. Yeah. So, luckily they played an offense that's like even more incompetent. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of, I wouldn't say offensive incompetence, but just but a just weird incompetence. Game. Uh, <laughs> the Rams beat the Falcons 31-27. It was not that close uh, for the vast majority of this game. Uh, but then surprisingly, it was the Falcons mounting a late comeback. Uh, very out of character for them. But And yeah, not only was it a late comeback, the Rams, I think, were up, what, 28-3? to Yep. Yeah, they were. <laughs> they so were the Falcons were on their little revenge uh, comeback. Yeah, the Falcons must have seen the scoreboard and said, we have got to change this now. Like... Like I mentioned it last week, or maybe this wasn't in the, on the podcast, but uh, Matt Ryan got his ball that he used to get 60,000 passing yards put in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, uh, and the number plaque on it is 283. Oh, my God. Like, you, they cannot escape that number no matter what they do. Like, they must have seen that thing and said, we have got to undo this right now. <laughs> and they almost did. Like, give yeah. them credit because they did, had a pretty damn good late charge to get back into that game. 
And then they had that one Hail Mary play at the end of the game. They got the ball back with like five seconds left. And Marcus Mariota just blew the wettest fart you could possibly blow on that last play and didn't even give them a chance to try to get a touchdown out of it. And like, I think Marcus Mariota is a great dude. Um, I'm happy that he's starting again, but like, that's why Marcus Mariota is not, you know, has not been a starter for the last couple seasons. (laughs) Um, Much like Baker Mayfield, he finds ways to get sacked on plays that he absolutely shouldn't. Um, that said, I will give him credit for the play where he was laying face down on the ground and still had a completion out of it. So <laughs> I don't know if you guys He's got it. his moments. Yeah. That that's yeah, that's the frustrating thing about Mariota is it's like occasional like, oh my god, hell yeah, and then it's just like, oh god, what are you doing? <laughs> so. Yeah, it's about seventy thirty of that though. Yeah. It is not by any means an even split. Yeah. Um, Drake London had a big game. Uh, Kyle Pitts unfortunately disappeared for the second straight game. Uh, starting to get a little concerned about him. Uh, also, somebody I'm starting to get concerned about is Matt Stafford. Because he's thrown... I mean, he led the league in interceptions last week, and he's thrown four now. Um, I mean, they did the same thing against the Bucks in the playoffs, where they're stomping a team and then just let them get back into it. Uh, I don't know. It's just like sketching me out a little bit so we gotta clean it up y'all i mean yeah i think they're uh they're having a little bit of a hangover still it's kind of dragging like yeah i mean it may be a hangover but they're still they're you know they're one and one in what is arguably a much weaker nfc west than it was last year oh yeah so they're they're still in a decent spot but you know, obviously, with the way he played against Buffalo last week, and the way he kind of, kind of, sort of let the uh, Falcons back into it, like not ideal, but still plenty of time to kind of get it cleaned up. So, oh yeah, I wouldn't raise the alarm about the Rams just yet, but in a couple weeks, if they're still playing like that, maybe there's some concern, but we'll see. Yeah. Speaking of the NFC West, though, big divisional game. Um... We were all wondering, are the Seahawks for real? Was week one going to translate? Uh, no. Um, but more importantly, uh, we thought we were going to get to see Trey Lance in like an actual game for once, you know, not in torrential downpour, but uh, second drive of the game, scrambling up the middle, he gets rolled up on and breaks his ankle. And uh, that is the end of Trey Lance's season, unfortunately. But uh their gamble in keeping Jimmy Garoppolo on the roster paid off because Garoppolo led them to a 27 to seven ass whooping of the Seahawks. It felt like to me that the Seahawks used all of their good fortune for the entire season in beating Russell Wilson week one. And now that that happened and it's out of the way, they're going to look like the worst team in the league the rest of the season. Oh, Absolutely. Um, they had 36 rushing yards. Oh, Man, who did they whatever, got <laughs> And then whatever the hell that trick play was where DJ Dallas lobbed the ball up right to the 49ers defender right on the goal line. Yeah. Like, what the hell was that? Um, yeah, Gino is completing a 24-30 of his passes, but under 200 yards. Again, just not moving the ball very far. Uh, so I think we need to let Geno Smith, though, if, if I'm being it, honest. Let Geno I mean, cook. Uh, it, the accuracy is good, but if you're throwing for that little, then it's really not doing you anything anyway. Um, and then their only points they scored was off a, a blocked field goal. Or was it a blocked punt? I can't remember. Um, I think it was a blocked field goal. Yeah. Uh, but hey, our, they get, I guess the special teams are good. Yeah. That's Pete Carroll football, baby. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo had an all right game. Uh, but like I was saying, you know, they, they gambled on keeping him on the roster because if Trey Lance is healthy, if he struggles all the, at any time, you know, everybody's going to be looking over, you know, the guy on the bench, like, why is Jimmy Garoppolo not playing? But they were willing to take that gamble in the case that Trey got hurt because in that case, then Jimmy Garoppolo is a damn good backup quarterback. And 
it's it's a case where it's unfortunate what happened to Trey Lance, but it's fortunate for the 49ers that they made this decision because at this I mean, point, they, they, yeah, they got their they, guy that has experience with the team and knows yeah. how to make it w- roll. And, and it's a relatively unchanged roster compared to last season, so you can kind of just, you know, plug and play and kind of just go along with it at this point. Oh, yeah. But and, – and it's also like if they had traded Jimmy G, like – they would have had to put Brock Purdy into the game on Sunday. Yeah, if they traded, like they would have. Had un- I think he's an undrafted rookie quarterback. Like that would not have gone well at all, in all likelihood. Yeah, it would have been Brock Purdy and Nate Sudfeld, which it would have been their two QBs. Yeah, not good. <laughs> uh, what the interesting debate about this is? Both times Garoppolo's been healthy for the whole year. They went to the Super Bowl and then they went to the NFC title game. And what if that well, happens again? Well, he he has to stay healthy for this team to be competitive. Yeah, because <laughs> who, like we said, who they got behind him? So at this, yeah, at this point, it's like if that happens again, do you just give up on the Trey Lance experience? Because at that point, Jimmy Garoppolo is the guy. I it, like. And and you know we had been saving or trying to save the Trey Lance part for the you know the injury section, but now I've got to bring it up. Like over the last three years now, he really hasn't played much organized football at all he's pretty much played like four games i think he sat out his senior year of north dakota state in 2020 got drafted third overall last year sat behind jimmy g and only played when he got hurt and now he just shattered his ankle two games into what was supposed to be you know his His first full big season so now again yeah he's really played like now four games total over like three calendar years like that's not good for quarterback development at all. Yeah. And uh and it's just like you know there's all these questions about like is Trey Lance actually as good as everybody says. Well now we've just pushed that question another, another. year into the future. Yeah. Exactly. So at this point it's like do you just go the Jordan Love route and just give up on the experiment if Jimmy Garoppolo plays really well? It's such a fascinating deal, like, but but now Jimmy G is going to be a free agent. So if he leads them, let's say, to the divisional round or the NFC title game, does Jimmy G say, hey, I like these guys. I play good with them. I want to come back, even if Trey Lance is there. Or is he going to jump on the first offer he gets from someone else and leave anyway? Oh, I didn't even think about that. He's going to be way more expensive, too, because he's hitting. Exactly. The unref- yeah, because he's going to be. Yeah, because I mean he's he's basically controlling his fate in regards to his paycheck for next year. Because because I'm looking at it now, like if the Matt Ryan experiment doesn't work out, Indianapolis could be calling him for next year. Maybe give him like a three four year deal after this after the season's over. Yeah, I mean if if something happens with Tua where they want to go in a different direction, hey, you never know. Miami could be calling him at some point. Like there are definitely going to be teams that are going to want him to come in and be their starting quarterback. And so if you, that ends up happening, the Niners are going to have to work to bring him back if they want him back. Can I I have an interesting one. The Giants. Oh, for That's Garoppolo? not a bad shout, actually. Yeah, because, I mean, like over the past couple seasons, Daniel Jones has just kind of been there, like, and they haven't really been, you know, competitive. But their defense looks good enough that, hey, if we have a solid quarterback, we could go win some ball games. I just figured it out. You guys ready? All so, right. Uh, Garoppolo is going to leave in free agency, but the 49ers are going to are. This is their chance because Kyle Shanahan has one quarterback he thinks is ideal. And I'm partially memeing, but also this is a thing. He said this before in interviews that he would love to have this guy as his quarterback. And this team, after what happened this week, might want to be moving off of him. 49ers are going to flip Trey Lance to the Vikings for Kirk Cousins. Oh my gosh. I could see it. Kyle Shanahan wants Kirk Cousins to be his quarterback. Because when he was a free agent, that was the year Shanahan uh, had just taken over the 49ers and they heavily pursued him. And he signed with the Vikings instead. And this year in the off season, like Kyle Shanahan was just gushing about Kirk Cousins. And then it was like, I got to stop because I don't want to get caught for tampering. So I, I honestly could see them do that because then the Vikings are like, sure, we'll take Trey Lance. You know, he's from, I mean, North Dakota's one state over, but he's basically from this area and he's already a folk hero here. 
That would be a very fascinating trade, but I wouldn't hate it either. Yeah, I kind of want it to happen now. Like, that'd be really interesting now that you've said that. <laughs> There's a couple I, like, I'm not going to say that, I like, want it, but it's it's definitely intriguing to think about now. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely going to be some interesting situations at season's end again. Uh, but I mean, uh, sp- speaking of interesting quarterback situations, maybe we can roll into the next game where... Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> this Cooper team's, Rush, baby! This team's quarterback isn't even on the main so, quarterback. Is hang on. In- I gotta, I gotta go. this up real quick. Um, I'm pretty sure Cooper Rush has started two games in his career. Um, and he's won them both. Yeah. And if I recall correctly, he balled the fuck out last year when he played the Vikings. Um, cannot find it right now, though. Uh, I'm on Pro Football Reference. I don't know how to use this game. Uh, 2021. Here we go. Game logs. So last year against the Vikings when he started, uh, he was 24-40 for 325 yards, two touchdowns, and an interception. Uh, That's a, yeah. In a game that they won twenty to sixteen, and this game finished twenty to seventeen. Do, do we have a quarterback controversy on our hands? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't want to say that I'm out on Dak Prescott, but <laughs> I'm just saying. Well, here's the thing that's weird: is can Cooper Rush keep this team in contention and for when he gets back? Dude, is my the, main thing. At this, I'm going to say yes. It's only been one game, but if this... I mean, he started two games. He's played pretty goddamn well in both of them. He looks really good up, in the last drive of the game to basically give him that shot to win the game. Did you go so. back to Dak if he comes back? If this keeps up? Oh, yeah. I, I think they would definitely go back <laughs> oh, to yeah. Dak. But, I mean, they got money the thing, on him, so... But the thing is, and we saw this on Sunday, is even if Cooper Rush has an okay game or a bad game, the rest of that team is still really, really talented. Oh yeah, and can kind of carry him to where they need to be, but on on the flip side of this, Joe Burrow has not looked good at all to start this season. Yeah, it's like this team went back two years uh, in regards to how they look. They look like yeah, they just they look so sloppy. It's I, mind blowing because they went out and spent all that money to try to get make their offensive line better, and it got worse. Yeah, I, like how I, do you do that? I honestly think their Super Bowl appearance last year hurt them because it made them th- they they made the playoffs ahead of schedule, um, and also they saved Zach Taylor's job. And we still don't know if that was a good thing or a bad thing. Um, yeah, their O line's gotten worse. Um, Burrow's been sacked twelve times in two games. Uh, mm. Just uh, and like their Super Bowl run last year. Not to take anything away from, I don't think they were a bad team, but it was very fluky. Like that's yeah, they, they, they. I mean, it was definitely a fuck it, chuck it, we're going for it. Yeah, like, and it, you know, and they like, benefited from their entire division collapsing, and Ryan Tannehill completely collapsing in a playoff game, and then the Chiefs' offense completely running into a wall in the second half of the AFC title game. I mean, they could have easily lost the wild card game against uh, Las Vegas too. I almost said Oakland. My yeah, God, that is, like, here's the thing too. You think about that game as there was a controversial call that flipped that game. Yeah, so if that yeah. game goes differently, we this conversation wouldn't have been had. Yeah, it would have been like, man, good run, Bengals. Maybe next year you'll be better. Um, it said good run next year you'll be worse. Yeah, yeah, they were up seventeen to three. Then the Bengals scored six in the third touchdown and a two point conversion to tie it, and then. Cooper Rush drove him right down the field and got the game-winning field goal right at the end. Um, now, I think the Bengals could still get a wild card spot, at least in part because their division outside of the Ravens is kind of just there. Yeah, like Pittsburgh with Trubisky and the Browns without Deshaun Watson, they're kind of just going to be there. They could easily get back to at least second place, but they've got to do it quick. Like th- it's not a long season. It's not like Major League Baseball where you got 150 games plus to figure out how to get yourself back into contention. You got 17 in the NFL. So if you start 0 and 2, 0 and 3, 0 and 4, your whole season's kind of screwed already. Oh yeah. Like they they can't sit around and muck around too much. They got to figure that out quick. Yeah, that's it's just been ugly so far. And like you're saying, Burrow hasn't played great. He's been running for his life the whole time. 
Um, yeah, it's just a, a, not the kind of start you need. Yeah, what what that tells me is next off season they need to go out and they need to spend like two three hundred million dollars, and it needs to be exclusively on offensive linemen and no other position. Oh, like yeah. you have got to solidify that if they're going to go anywhere again. Because he he cannot continue to take that beating week in and week out, and expect him to throw for three or four hundred yards and you know three or four touchdowns here and there. Like it, it's just he's just not going to be able to do that. Like well, the human body can't take that many hits in such a short amount of time. Like they're I I don't know. Yep, I don't know, man. I don't know what's up with them. Uh... I, that quote that's been going around though from Lyle Collins where he's like, nobody's ever going to touch you again. And it's like, cool. You guys have let him get hit 12 times. <laughs> so about uh, that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ironically of, enough against his former team too. Yeah. Speaking of teams that aren't really doing much on the offensive side of the ball, the Denver Broncos. Uh, so I don't want to say I told you so because I wasn't buying into the Broncos hype in the off season, but I'm I'm smiling right now. So <laughs> yeah, I just I yeah I just it's been mind boggling this whole time how this and he got the extension before he even played a game. So I just I don't get it, and the way this game was played was another very poorly they they just happened to win this one, but like another kind of poorly mismanaged game uh, in the red zone. Oh yeah, the uh, again they can't score from the from the goal line. Uh, they had a series of plays where it was they were on the one yard line and then they passed and then they tried running on second down and got tackled for loss and then they were still on like the three yard line and then they passed again. It was like, what are you doing? Just jam the ball up the middle for the touchdown. You've uh, got Javante Williams. He's a really good running back. Just give him the rock. Yeah, and he then can you had, get it done. An ex- especially egregious part of this game where they were down 9 6 in the fourth quarter and they lined up to kick like they were on the Texans, I believe, 35 yard line and were lining up for a field goal. Or no, they were, they were, they couldn't make up their mind on what they wanted to do. And so they ran Brandon McManus back out there at the last second and got a delay a game penalty, which pushed him, pushed him back five yards. So then they decided to punt there. Or no, I think they lined up for the field goal, and then they took a timeout and switched to their punt formation. So they took a delay a game and wasted a timeout. And then there was like multiple other times where they couldn't get the playoff in time. And there was multiple times during the game where fans were get, counting out loud the play clock. Because, I just want to say that. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I'm getting serious Freddy Kitchens vibes from Nathaniel Hackett. Uh, because if you remember... Freddie Kitchens, his lone season as the Browns head coach. Everybody loved Freddie Kitchens, the guy. They thought he was an offensive genius. And then as soon as he took over head coaching, he was completely out of his depth. His play, like his individual momentary play calling was terrible. Uh, The Browns couldn't ever score from the red zone. Like as soon as they got into the 10 yard line, they would just shut down offensively and get stopped constantly. I mean, they had 11 plays last week. Uh, within, I think, the Seahawks five-yard line and didn't score a touchdown. Um, no. They bas- basically did the same thing this week, um, and it wasn't until Russell Wilson turned back into Russell Wilson at the end of this game and, you know, led them on a touchdown drive to beat the butt-ass shit Texans. He had some horrible-looking throws in the first part of that game, too, but yeah. what, what this makes me wonder, because I'm, I'm honestly not sure, is... Was Nathaniel Heck calling the plays for the Packers last year, or was Matt LaFleur calling the plays last year? I'm pretty sure LaFleur was the play caller. I mean, if that's the case, then why the hell did the Broncos hire Nathaniel Hackett? Because uh, Aaron Rodgers gave him the seal of approval. <laughs> Adam Gase, you know. I mean, I, I, I'm not trying to dismiss Nathaniel Hackett's ability as a coach, but, you know... If he wasn't the one calling the plays last year and it was LaFleur doing it, then what really stood out about him that made him a more attractive hire than somebody like Eric Bieniemy or, I don't know, Jim Caldwell? And there's multiple other guys I can't think of off the top of my head right now. But what made them think him over anybody else? 
especially after the run now that Denver's had of just hiring terrible, terrible coaches to lead. Like, they've gone from Vance Joseph to Vic Fangio to Nathaniel Hackett. Like, they just keep swinging and missing over and over and over again. And now they've got a franchise quarterback sitting there. Like, they've got to get it right sometime, at some point, right? Yeah, Hackett looks like he is in way over his head right now. Yeah, and it doesn't help that these, I mean, these first two weeks he sh- should be playing better ball. They should, like, the, yeah. whole, the whole team, but he is the uh, the conductor at the helm. So uh, you should be beating the, the Seahawks and the Houston Texans outright. And you yeah, because that's what kicking and screaming their team. Is they've played two very bad teams the first two weeks, and they've put up a combined, what, like They scored 16 points. points in each game. So 32 points across yeah. those two games. And they they could have easily won last week, but they also easily could have lost this week. Yeah. I don't, I don't understand what the hell is up with them. Yeah, they're like, three for... Yeah, this, here's a little stat for this game. The Texans were two for 13 on third down, and the uh, Broncos were three for 12. Oh, my God. <laughs> and, like, I don't really know how much there is to talk about the Texans. Like, we know they're not good. Like, we know Davis Mills has some kind of potential, but, like, is there any chance that, like, Davis Mills could actually be, like, the franchise guy of that team and after, once they start to build around him at all? I just don't know because, uh, it's hard because, I mean, you can't really take these first two weeks, I mean, with Houston. Uh, I mean, yeah, he played pretty well in the first half of that Colts game, Uh if you take that alone, yeah, I would say yes. But just, I don't know. The first two weeks as a whole, just, he scored 29 points. So. Yeah, and I thought we saw it last season, but it hasn't shown up this year. And I think part of it's Levy Smith, because he just seems like he's kind of phoning it in. <laughs> so. Yeah, like holding this team together until he can get a good draft pick. Like, yeah. Or it almost feels like, I wouldn't say this for sure, but it almost feels like half the time Levy Smith doesn't just doesn't give a shit about how the team does, and he's just happy to be there. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, he was basically... I mean, this is just a theory, but they were ready to hire Josh McCown as their quarterback, and then Brian Flores dropped his lawsuit on the NFL, and then immediately they went out and signed Lovey Smith out of nowhere. Because it, it almost seems like they were like, hey, we're just going to hire you for this year so we don't look shitty. <laughs> you know? But then, if that's the case, they shouldn't have fired David Culley at all. Yeah. Like, what do they fire him for, then? It's so weird. Um, like, don't be weird. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say I want the Texans to do well, but, like, it would be good for football, I think, if they did. Oh, yeah. But it, it's one of those situations, and, and there's multiple examples of this across different leagues, but I think it's one of those deals where until an, another person owns it, nothing's going to happen that's good. Uh, perfect example to sum up the uh, Texans. They had more penalty yards than rushing yards. So, <laughs> um, Wow. 94. The uh, Broncos had 13 penalties for 100 yards, by the way. Oh, my gosh. So. Undisciplined. Yeah, that'll, yeah. yeah, that'll keep your teams combined for a total of 25 points. Yeah. Uh, let's jump on to another AFC West team that has been a disappointment so far. Uh, the Cardinals beat the Raiders 29-23, and uh, everything hurts and I'm dying. They the Raiders have. pulled a, they pulled a charger. They, yep. they replicated up, their uh, division. Rival. Up 20 to nothing at halftime, and then Kyler Murray reminded everybody why he is such a highly rated quarterback. And we, we got to talk about the two-point conversion. So mm, yeah. That was nuts. <laughs> he ran for... 20 seconds and 84 yards just to scramble in for a two point conversion. How do Max Crosby and Chandler Jones not get a hand on him? I don't know. Uh, just absurd. Had, like, the, how, nuttiest, how... No, the, the nuttiest part of it, though, is he kept scrambling around like the whole, you know, the pocket collapsed and everything, obviously, because yeah. he's trying to do all the coverage. But then he gets back to like the middle of the field and the pocket like reforms. While he's sitting there, and he's trying to direct traffic after he's already run for like 40-some-odd yards, and then he just scrambles in an open part of the end zone. Yep. Like, 
I've never in my life seen a play like that before. But that just shows you how damn talented that kid is. But yeah, I don't know what to say about the Raiders, though. I mean, they looked really good in the first half, but the Cardinals looked really bad, and it flipped right on its head. Yep. Uh, you know, held two like, field goal in the second half, and then you know, gave up that ridiculous two point conversion. And then a touchdown that was basically at the buzzer to send it to overtime. And then their overtime drive was bad because they almost got into field goal range. And then on three straight plays, this was infuriating. Hunter Renfro completes a catch and then fumbles it and they recover it. Very next play. Devonte Adams just kind of gives up on his route. Uh, by the way, he only had two catches for 12 yards. Uh, one of them was a touchdown, but still. He kind of just gives up on his route and it bounces off a Cardinals defender's hands and is almost picked. And then the very next play, they hit Renfro again and Renfro trying way too hard to get to the first down marker, fumbles it for the second time in three plays. And that's when the Cardinals uh, defensive back, whose name currently escapes me and I can't find him on the list, uh, Byron Murphy, that's who it was, picks up the ball and takes it all the way, like, 60 yards for the game-winning touchdown. You know, it's it's funny because we usually do our, you know, our Dunyan Ring segment later on in the season when a team yeah, we just think is done. And I'll be totally honest, like, if the Cardinals had lost on Sunday, I was going to write them off and bring them up for Dunyan Rings this week <laughs> before they came back. But like, oh, yeah, the, yeah, the alarm bells now would be... Now looking at it, I'm about ready to write the Raiders off. Yeah, I don't. That is just not what's good. I don't know if I'm ready to write them off yet because they've they've played good football. It's just mistakes have cost them both games. Like they had three chances against the Chargers last week to go down and score, and they didn't do it, and it ended with a car interception. And then they had the ball in overtime, like driving to field goal range, and then Hunter Renfro coughed it up twice. So it's like they've. It's just basic shit that you got to clean up. It's also making me second question the hiring of Josh McDaniels. Like I've, I've know I mentioned it last week, yep. and I mentioned it before, but I don't think he's that capable as a head coach to get the job done. I don't know why you didn't just stick with Rich Bisaccia. <laughs> or like we just mentioned before, the Texans and the Broncos, Eric Bieniemy was sitting right there. Yeah, like poaching him away from a division rival would have been huge for them. Or a Jim oh, yeah. Caldwell, or again, we can go through the whole list again if we want to, but I just don't know why you went with Josh McDaniels. I, I don't, like, sure, he's got past head coaching experience, but he's also got past experience with spurting a team after signing with them. Like, I don't know. I don't get it. Yeah, it, it's just like a baffling higher i don't i don't understand what they see in josh mcdaniels but get clean it up raiders come on <laughs> so i'm pissed off <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh speaking of being pissed off uh this next game uh no surprise yeah i was gonna say let's all laugh at the bears uh <laughs> yeah the and, i mean the me packers de- packers definitely own the bears that's just are the bears even trying like, uh, good question. Ju- um, Justin Fields threw the ball 11 times. Like, what are you doing? It looked like they were last week when they beat the Niners. Yeah. I mean, they but only threw, they like, on. yeah. I mean, I remember a lot of people over the offseason were sitting there like, man, Darnell Mooney's going to be a breakout wide receiver this year. He's going to catch, like, 1,500 yards. And he had, like, two catches for negative four yards on Sunday. <laughs> He has, uh, I think he has negative. He has, he has four yards on the season because he, I think, yeah. he had eight against the Niners. So through I, two games, he has four receiving yards. How do the Bears constantly have the absolute shittiest offensive stat lines? Because I remember there was a, a game a couple of years ago where they had one passing yard at halftime. Uh, there was the game against the Browns last year where they had one passing yard for the entire game and 47 yards for the entire game. Um. And then tonight, or not tonight, uh, 48 passing yards. They only attempted 11 passes. It's it's like they're not even trying. Was uh, Matt Nagy not the problem, dare I say? <laughs> well, 
they fired Matt Nagy because his offense has sucked, and they went and hired Matt Eberflus, who's another defensive minded head coach. And they were like, "Oh man, that's our it it, it, mu- it just must be that like the atmosphere around the Bears in general, because like this team is like for at least from what I've been looking at for history wise, they've just not been an offensive team. No, they, they just it's yeah. like, I mean. They're the only team in the NFL that's never had a quarterback throw for 4,000 yards. Like, they're just, they're just allergic to offense. It's like they forget that there's more to football than just stopping the other team. Like, they're like, <laughs> yeah, oh, let's, shit, let's, we have yeah, an like, offense? <laughs> let's stop the other team and see if we can, you know, throw a point on the board or something. Yeah. I mean, so I was reading about this. Uh, the 2005 Bears are the weirdest team I've ever seen because they had... Or so they had a rookie Kyle Orton starting that whole season. Rex Grossman played the first game. We got hurt. Kyle Orton came in. Kyle Orton had maybe the worst full season an NFL quarterbacks ever had. And they had literally the worst passing offense in the entire league. And do you want to know how their season went? 10 and six. 13 and three, number one seed in the NFC. What the hell? Yeah. And then they benched Kyle Orton for the playoffs and they lost in the first. Oh, that's right. That was a Super Bowl season. No, it was the, the year after they did that. In 05, oh, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. they were the number one seed despite being the worst team at passing the ball in the NFL. And then Kyle Orton, who had quarterbacked them the whole season, got benched for Rex Grossman before the playoff game. And Rex Grossman uh, did Rex Grossman things and turned the ball over like four times. Well, it, it's like the 2018 Bears, too. They went 12-4 and four with that extremely good defense, but the offense looked like shit. Yeah. But now the issue is, all those guys on that 2018 defense are gone, gone except for Roquan Smith. So now, like, you can't rely on the defense to keep you in games. So if your offense looks like shit, you're just screwed. I wish I could remember what the stat is. I'm looking at it right now. But uh, I believe after they scored a touchdown on their first drive, um, the Bears did not have another first down, I think, until after half. They, I think they went yeah. five three and outs in a row. That's what oh, my God. Just putrid. Uh, and like, and obviously, like, I'm not ready to write off Justin Fields yet, and I think it's unfair to do that. But like, it's it's very difficult to evaluate Justin Fields as a player and as a playmaker and a facilitator when this is what you're dealing with. It's like Davis Mills yeah. in Houston. Like, how do you figure out if this is the guy that you think is going to be the one to lead you to success when? Like, you're not helping him get there at all. Yeah. It's I also just, just checked four straight three and outs after scoring a touchdown. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it. that's the most baffling thing about when they hired Matt Eberflus was, like, rookie coach or rookie quarterback, let's not support him with, you know, a, a brilliant offensive mind. Now, if, if they had hired Matt Eberflus in, like, 2018, we might be having a different conversation, but... The defense isn't there anymore. And his last name is Eberflus. Like, come on. <laughs> it sounds cool. It's fun it, to say. It sounds like something from, like, the cat in the hat. He's like, let me get my Eberflus out. And... <laughs> <laughs> so. And it's the Packers in, in Green Bay against Chicago. I don't think we need to say anything about the Packers. So. <laughs> Yeah, the Packer. Never... Well, the main question was, can Aaron Rodgers do things with the receiving core without Devontae Adams? And the answer is yes. So yeah. that's all we need to say. <laughs> I guess it's going to be the new thing as they just get their asses whooped week one. So, And after further review, Aaron Rodgers still, in fact, owns the Bears. Yep. So uh, let's go jump forward to Monday night. A massive AFC uh, rivalry rematch. And uh... boy. The Bills might be kind of good because uh, they beat the Titans 41 to 7. They beat uh, them like that was an ugly loss for the Titans. They have won their two games this season by a combined score of 72 to 17. I got to uh, say, this game was just funny to watch. Like, I, I can't tell you why, but there was just something so funny about watching the Titans play like absolute shit. Dude. And not only that, but Ryan Tannehill got benched yeah like for malik willis yeah who did not look good either but you know i think at that point they're like we're not winning this game let's just get ryan out of there so he doesn't fucking die (laughs) 
you know. And not only that, but the Titans, in their massive running back in the form of Derrick Henry, had 25 yards of rushing, which is unheard of. Yeah, he The did. Bills stopped and, the run. And it it probably got worse for them because it sounds like Taylor Wawan will, will might be out for the season now because he yeah. hurt his knee last night. And that was uh, one of the other things, too, was like they already lost Harold Landry, who's probably their best defensive player. Bud Dupree got hurt in the game. They were missing, I think, their top two corners. So they had like a sixth round rookie covering Stephon Diggs one on one all night. Mm, and how'd that show? go? <laughs> and it showed because Stephon Diggs went, had 12 catches for 148 yards and three touchdowns. And three touchdowns. <laughs> they just like. Yeah, like they, they did had... that without Gabe Davis. He, he didn't yeah. even play. It was 10 7, and the Titans were, you know, they had stopped the Bills in the red zone and had the ball before half and could have done something. And I think that's when Tannehill uh, threw his first interception it was right there. Um, and then it was 17 7 going into half, and then uh, the Bills just turned on the Jets in the third quarter, and it wasn't even close after that. Yeah, and notably in the fourth quarter, the Bills punted for the first time of the season. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then it got muffed. Yeah. So one hundred percent of the Bills' punts this year have been recovered by them. Yeah, they should just onside kick every time. I'm down. That dude, that's just the insane thing about this Bills team, though. Is like, oh yeah, they the are them. Shut down their rushing game. Okay, that's fine. Uh, Josh Allen will just throw for three hundred seventeen yards and four touchdowns, and also our defense will just crush you to death. Yeah, the pick six for Matt Milano in that game too. Like them as a unit, man, and I, I, I don't think Tre'Davious White's back yet either. Like, as good as they are right now, wait till he gets back into the lineup. Oh yeah, yeah. It's it's only two games in, and I'm trying not to get too out of myself, but th- this team looks complete. Like, yeah, these two teams are obviously heading in their respective directions, and uh, one being yeah, the think- Bills heading towards glory, and the Titans just keep falling. Yeah, yeah, I th- I think the Titans peaked last year. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't... and I just and that's what we were talking about earlier is that this division's getting sloppier because the Titans should be running away with it, but they just they don't look complete anymore. They just don't, and they're oh. losing pieces each week with injuries. So since when is Josh Gordon on the Titans? Oh yeah. <laughs> When did that happen? Uh, yeah, that happened in the um, off season. Oh I think I don't remember. I was gonna but... say they're yeah. going to regret trading AJ Brown. Because... I think they are already. Oh, absolutely. They already that have. made yeah. no sense. Because here's their their receivers. So you have Traylon Burks, the receiver they drafted to replace him, um, and he could still turn out to have a good career, but like he's not AJ Brown yet. Uh, Robert Woods, the guy who wasn't or who got you know. He tore his ACL last year, and then they basically kicked him to the curb for OBJ. Uh, Austin Hooper, who couldn't stick around with Cleveland, uh, and then three or a couple nobodies and Josh Gordon. And Josh Gordon didn't even have a reception in the game; he just had one target. But uh, man, I don't know. This good. <laughs> this this Titans team is just a big question mark because. They're, you know, they can perform, but I don't know. Your your whole offense ro- is around Derrick Henry, and if he's not going, then the rest of the team's not going. So, yeah. dare Especially, I say, Mike Vrabel's job security? Uh, uh no, like I, they, I, I don't blame. They, they just Vrabel. extended him in the GM, but mm, I don't I think it's, say the yeah. GM would get the kick to the curb before Vrabel because Vrabel drug this team to a number one seed last year. Um, I think his job's pretty safe right now. Yeah, not Uh, to say he's a bad coach or anything, but if this trend continues, you know, would they think about changing direction there? Not in variable. Yeah, I I think they would. Yeah, yeah, they would change, you know, who's in charge of their personnel before. before And honestly, I could see them getting rid of Tannehill before they get rid of variable. So, yeah, I'd agree with that. Yeah. I mean, we were talking about earlier places Garoppolo could go. Shit, maybe the Titans. This is one of them, yeah. Which sucks, because, like, up until the playoff game, Tannehill was playing decent ball. pretty goddamn good for the Titans for, like, his entire stint starting, and then he's just melted down over his last few games. Yeah. So, 
the as a Jags fan, I want them to keep Melton down, but <laughs> on the other hand, I hate that for Ryan Tannehill. So yeah. yeah Speaking Bills... of quarterbacks that melted down after losing a playoff game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, can we just talk about how it was basically twenty seventeen all over again because you had uh Case Keenum throwing to Stephon Diggs while the Philadelphia Eagles were absolutely rolling over the Vikings in Philly. Uh, <laughs> it's the 2017 NFC title game all over again. The uh, more time goes by, the less things change. Yep, yeah, but the Eagles beat the Vikings 24-7, to and oh boy, was it ugly. <laughs> that yeah, was... the score, that's, that score does not tell the tale. Yeah. Honestly, like, the the... The, the score of the Eagles Vikings game and the score of the Bills Titans game, the way those games went should have been flip flopped. Yeah. Because the Eagles looked like they were the ones that could have easily put up 40 or 45 on them. But it definitely felt like they took their foot off the gas towards the end. But yeah, because Hertz only had five incompletions out of his 31. He looked really good. Oh, yeah. He, I, th- I mean, he's their guy. I, I really think he is moving yeah. forward, and he's I think gonna... they finally got it. Yeah, in the in the Philly, or, or I said Phillies because same city, but anyway, uh, the Eagles, um, they have control of this division if they just keep chugging on the train tracks right now. So, oh, for sure, yeah, because I mean, you look at the Giants. So far, they've beat the Titans, who are struggling, yeah. and the Panthers, who are struggling, each by one score. And I think the Giants could be frisky. But like the Eagles look like an offensive powerhouse. Yeah, like they they can they look like they can go out to any team and like be like not necessarily give any team an ass whooping, but they can be competitive and they can go out there and win some damn football games, which is all oh, you yeah. can ask for. So I mean, I mean, Darius Slay had as many catches last night as Justin Jefferson did. So like their defense is pretty damn good too. Speaking of uh the uh Eagles defense, um. Kirk Cousins had some uh, Garfield in him oh my for God. Uh, uh, the red zone in particular. So bad. Two uh, red zone picks. God. How in the world? <laughs> Not to mention, um, I think the Eagles had like four other pass deflections too. And he is now 2-10 in 10 on Monday Night Football in his career. Also, I like that everybody who rushed the ball for the Vikings wears a single digit. That's kind of funny. Um, yeah, Kirk Cousins was the team's leading rusher. That tells you all you need to know about that. Um, he just It was just a terrible game for him and the Vikings. Yeah, and another, another team that functions sem- semi, even though they have more receiving pieces. Uh, Dalvin Cook did absolutely whatever in this game. Yeah, yeah I, he was invisible. I, I, did, yeah. did Alexander Madison get more touches than he did last night? No, but... Because it, it kind of felt that way watching the They both the combined... Between Cook and Madison, they combined for 25 yards and 8 carries. Yeah. Oh, so my God. That and is... And their longest run between the two of them was 6 yards. So... Yeah, that's the uh, other crazy thing. Ugh. It's like, you have Jalen Hurts' is awakening at offense, especially with, you know, the addition of A.J. Brown. Um, and then the defense, though. I mean, they obviously couldn't contained the the lions last week which is a funny sentence to say but they clamped down on the vikings just everything about them yeah yeah and now this makes me think more about the lions because <laughs> oh yeah honestly like, yeah because if if the the eagles are out here like with potential like ass whipping potential and the lions are able to keep up with them like Dude, what does that I'm mean for them you. the, the ceiling for the them might be higher too lions go so. to the offs <laughs> <laughs> I was talking. I was talking earlier about potential coach of the year candidates with Mike McDaniel in Miami. Watch out for Nick Sirianni in Philadelphia too, because that looks oh, like it was a really good hire last year. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, we're... They got something good going on. Um, and that was week two. So yeah, had that weird double Monday night game thing. Uh, I, think I was so. not a fan of that personally. Yeah, because yeah, they ran pretty much in competition to each other. Which, you know, on Sunday they do that anyway, but still. Yeah. Um, so, uh. Shall we kick yeah. it to the news? Yeah, Dewey, what's on the news? Anything we haven't covered yet? Yeah, we got some news, obviously. Uh, the Niners and Dre Greenlaw agreed to a two year contract extension like an hour after the game ended on Sunday. Because mm. they couldn't wait any longer to get that done. Yeah. Uh, we already covered the Trey Lance thing, unfortunately. He had surgery on that yesterday, so he's out for the season. 
Uh, Tremaine Ankrum, one of the linemen for the Rams, he fractured his leg against the Falcons, so he's out for a while. Browns put Chase Winovich and Jesse James on IR uh, because the Niners haven't had enough issues with running backs getting hurt. Tyrion Davis Price is out with a high ankle sprain. Uh, the Ravens lost another linebacker to a torn Achilles, Stephen Means. Oh, gosh. Akeem Hicks tore his plantar fascia, so he's out for a month. Leonard Williams sprained his ACL. And the most thankful news uh, from last night, that Dane Jackson, the Bills cornerback that got that scary collision with his neck, had no major injury to his neck or his spinal cord, and he got released from the hospital earlier today. So that's, oh, that's great news yeah, that's, there. That's good news to hear. Yeah, that, that looked really bad. Yeah. yeah, that was a rough play. And the fact of, uh, I think uh, clips have been posted, but the what transpired as well after, like, he was like just sitting there. A Titans the guy, yeah. that yeah. Would, yeah. Uh, Which is, yeah, it was definitely a case of, like, not realizing the guy was injured. Oh, yeah. You know, just trying to get the guy off his teammate to help him up, and then it's like, oh, God, that didn't look good. Yeah. yeah. Couple of uh, signings. The Commanders claims John Ridgeway off of waivers for the Cowboys. The Giants signs Jalen Smith, Cowboys legend, to their practice squad. Uh, I think yesterday, the Bucks signed Cole Beasley to their practice squad. Hey, what and team the did Niners... he used to be on? Was it the Cowboys as well? Uh, he was on the Bills. <laughs> Bill oh, he's on the Cowboys before that. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look at the and... Cowboys giving away people. Okay, and the I Niners guess. signed uh, Kurt Benkert, Packers legend, to their practice squad. Well, for I quarterback bet you he depth. was on the Cowboys at some point as well. Hang on. Uh, <laughs> and then, <laughs> oh, he was not. Damn it. <laughs> and, All right. Yeah. And then one of the more notable news stories as well, Mike Evans, we talked about the fight earlier with him and Marshawn Lattimore. He got suspended for his next game or the Bucks' next game as a result of that. But he's, I think he's having his appeal heard either today or tomorrow. Yeah, so and we'll I guess how that goes. I guess he got suspended and not Lattimore because Evans ran back onto the field. I guess is the the issue. And know. we talked about that 2017 incident. He got suspended for that one as well. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what's up with that. Bills tackle Bobby Hart got suspended for a game. Apparently, after the Titans game ended last night, he tried to punch a Titans player, but hit one of their coaches in the head instead by accident. Oh my oh, god. That's not good. And Chiefs starting linebacker Willie Gay is suspended for four games for violating the NFL's personal conduct policy. He was arrested back in January on a charge of criminal property damage of less than a thousand dollars. So that's can't be doing that stuff. Hmm. Uh, Las Vegas police investigating a report that a fan smacked Kyler Murray after the Raiders game on Sunday. Have you guys seen the video of this? Yeah, I saw the video and like I don't know if the fan was trying to smack his shoulder pads like the other fans were, or if he was actually trying to go for his face. But Kyler looked yeah. really pissed off after it happened. He just like swings down and just clubs him in the face, like while yeah. he's like, high fiving fans. Uh, speaking of people investigating stuff, uh, a Browns fan was arrested today because at the end of the Browns game against the Jets, he threw a water bottle at owner Jimmy Haslam. <laughs> Bottle gate two electric boogaloo. Yeah. So yeah, not the first time so that's happened at the Brown Stadium. Yeah. And we mentioned hey. earlier the Chargers team doctors sue it or uh stabbing people. Well, Tyrod Taylor decided, you know what? I'm gonna sue that guy. And he filed a lawsuit seeking, I believe, five million dollars in damages against the Chargers and the team doctor, and I think the company or the agency or whatever that the doctor works for for medical malpractice. So interesting to see how that goes. But uh, yeah, that's, that's something that's your news. All right. And then our new favorite segment, perhaps our WTF or what the football moment of the week. W T F. What the football doesn't come from the NFL, but it comes from college where the COO of the plant-based meat company called Beyond Meat was arrested in a parking garage near the Arkansas Razorback Stadium after their win against Missouri State for biting a man's nose. <laughs> there is a there's a tweet I saw where it just said like Beyond Meat COO be like and it was just the hand doing the got your nose thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, clearly he, he's not looking beyond meat because he bit someone's nose. Yeah. 
That's a bit contradicting there, but <laughs> sending some mixed signals there, man. Yeah. Um, why is college football so goddamn weird? Like, is there any normal people who are involved in college football or at college football games? I'm inclined to say no. <laughs> like, <laughs> like yeah. there's no way. Oh my god, it's so weird. Who does that? Uh, so yeah, th- th- this might be a new weekly segment. Maybe it'll be from college. Maybe it'll be from the NFL. Hell, maybe it'll be from high school. Who knows? Yeah. But we'll try and find some cool little shit to throw in towards the end of the show. And this week, it's biting someone's nose because, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, come on, man, but significantly nibble, nibble. shittier. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. So that's that. Yeah. What a weird story. Who does that? Should we roll into pickums before we do our little questionnaire on the team status? Uh, we can do the questions first. Okay. Yeah. Let's do those then. All right. Uh, since you put it in here, uh, which 0-2 team or winless team, so that'd be the Raiders, Bengals, Titans, Panthers, Falcons, Colts, and Texans, has the best chance to make the playoffs? <laughs> What a sloppy list. Yeah. <laughs> it's like spinning a roulette wheel. I mean, obviously, you got to put faith in the, I mean, or I don't want to say faith because last season we we were literally trying not to because it's, it's bad. But yeah. the Bengals should and have the potential to make the playoffs. So, I mean, that's the, that's the obvious pick um, out of all these teams. Uh, you could make a case for the Raiders, um, obviously, with their offensive weapons as well. Not talking about Hall of Famer Derek Carr. But, yeah. Uh, but yeah, those are the two teams that really should have to step it up. Um, we already talked about the Colts. So I'm not going to go into that. So, <laughs> Yeah, I'm inclined to say the Raiders, too. But I think the Bengals are you know, easily as much of an option as any other. But And then the other, the other side of that token, which 2-0 and o team which is the Bills, Dolphins, Chiefs, Eagles, Giants, and Bucks has the best chance to miss the playoffs. So I feel like this like one is other. probably a way easier question to answer. <laughs> oh yeah. So it's yeah, you got, it's like that one. Dra- it's like that one dragon meme where there's just all the fuck like the majorly like mean <laughs> oh, looking yeah. of dragons, yeah. and he's just got the giants as the silly derpy one. Like yeah. that's just. Just yeah, a goofy off. Yeah, it's like I'm not uh, saying they're gonna like collapse, but the Giants are definitely the odd man out in that. List. Yeah, you just all those other teams are playoff contenders. Like, he, yeah. I mean, the uh, Dolphins obviously have had their troubles of making the playoffs or like closing out the regular season, but yeah, and they've already got two huge wins over teams they might be competing for a while. Yep. Spot, so, yep. yep. Um, and since I didn't say anything for the winless teams, uh, basically the same thing, Raiders, Bengals. And I still think there is a path for the Titans to make the playoffs because they're in the AFC South. So Yeah, that's the, yeah. Well, that'll be an interesting dive as each week goes on. Yeah. <laughs> Which will lead us into the week three pick they thems. <laughs> Why? Why did we call it pick? <laughs> we've, we've done that for a while now. It's been set up that way for a minute. Oh my god! <laughs> um, felt like I had a bit for pick they them's this week, and I forgot to write it down. while that work? So let's just get right into it. Starting with our Thursday night game, the Steelers travel across state borders into Cleveland to face the Browns. Which team with a shitty quarterback is gonna come out on top? This is a this has got barn burner written all over it. God, don't want to watch this game. Uh, I, I'm gonna take the Steelers. So. I'm gonna take the Steelers as well, but uh, it would not surprise me if the Browns find a way. Oh yeah. So the contrarian in me says the Browns, but I also think that like as weird as of a, of a sentence as this is gonna sound, Jacoby Brissett's played just as good this year as Mitch Trubisky has, so it would not shock me at all. If he Cleveland wins, well and I'm going to roll with him. He he was he was not good uh, week one, but Jake Burskett was pretty good week two. So yeah, I don't I don't blame you for taking the brownies or sorry the elves. Uh, so. Good thing you put me under Jack. Oh, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Let me fix that. Spe- and yeah, speaking of Jack, a rare appearance or non appearance for him after a Bills win. I had to yeah. get that in there. Uh, very out of character. Speaking yeah. of the Bills, the Bills travel down to Miami. Uh, huge AFC East game. The Bills have dominated the Dolphins over the last couple of years. 
This but, could easily be game of the week. Yeah, this is the ultimate this test. This is for fascinating. The can are you for real? Can you hang with the with the Bills finally? Um, what do you guys got? I think the Bills are going to win, but it's it could be one of those games like we just saw on Sunday with uh, Baltimore and Miami, where like it could go either way or it could be a comeback. But like Garrett said, I think this could easily be the best game of the week. Yeah, because yeah, both these teams have potential through the air. It's going to be the running game is that's really going to be interesting between both teams. So that uh, and they both had issues defense. with that too. The yep. Bills have a very good pass rush too. So if they can get after Tua, that can negate that. Like a yeah, and he can underthrow some more put passes yeah. to Tyreek Hill. You're gonna, you're gonna so I'm gonna take Bills, but it ah this this could be interesting. Yeah, I'm he... gonna take the the Bills as well, but like it's gonna be Stephon Diggs versus Xavier Howard, which is gonna be a pretty good one on one matchup for the whole game. Um, I think the Bill, like I think the Dolphins will put up a fight, but I think the Bills are just a superpower at this point. I hope Tredavious White is back for this game because him lining up against Tyree Kill or Jalen Wada would be a treat. Oh, yeah. Um, then we head to the Meadowlands where the Cincinnati Bengals are looking to get off the mat. They're going against Broadway Joe Flacco and the Jets. Who you guys got? Why do wow. I see the Jets? Why do I see the Jets winning this game? I'm I was just, I was thinking the it. same thing. It, the Bengals, is... the Bengals have to win this game to get rolling, but I could see them losing it. So I'm gonna pick the Bengals, but I, I oh, if the Jets win this game, it'd be good for them because it'll be two and one. But it'll be bad for the Bengals because it means they've lost three in a row. Yeah, and we'll be kicking and screaming uh, for the rest of the season. So yeah, I'm gonna go with the Bengals, but it would not surprise me at all if the Jets pull this one out. I'm feeling it. Give me the Jets. I think they're Ooh. I think they're gonna get after Joe Burrow. I think Sauce Gardner versus uh Jamar Chase is gonna be a fun battle. Um and the Jets have some pieces. They've just needed, you know, competent quarterback play and like Flacco's kind of playing pretty well right now. I mean so. Joe Flacco looks like 2014, 2015 Joe yeah. Flacco, dare I say. Like this is the best he's looked in quite a while. And you brought it up earlier with I don't remember who, we, what team we were talking about. Where if one guy does good, do you go back to the other one? Oh, but, the Cowboys. Yeah, when I was talking. Yeah, about them. with Cooper Rush and Dak. But like, if the Jets, let's say, if the Jets are somehow sitting at like three and one after Week Four, do they keep ro- rolling with Flacco or do they put Zach Wilson back in? I, oh God, that was so tough. It's just tough because you're like, it, it's like picking between like Geno Smith and Drew Locke. Like, what do you? Like it, it on a little bit of a higher level, but like, yeah, because you know Flacco's got the experience, so why not use him? Yeah. So. Oh man, I... or even <laughs> two and two, really. Hmm. Like, it's really I, I interesting think, to think about. I think if the Jets are off to a good start, um, if they okay, if they're two and two, I think you go with Zach Wilson. Um, if you're three and one, I think you've got Flacco, but on a very short leash. Because at that point, you're just because like you got to figure out if you've got something in Zach Wilson this year. So yeah, and this is kind of when he comes back is this make or break kind of see what he's actually made of. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that'll be interesting. Uh, the classic cornered a- animal game: two teams that have playoff aspirations uh, that are both zero and two, both need a win. It's Raiders traveling to Tennessee to play the Titans. I'm picking. I do the not Raiders. want to pick this game. Like I'm picking the Raiders because I want the Titans to lose this game, <laughs> and I think the injuries are going to start piling up for the Titans. Yeah, I'm going to take the Raiders as well. The Raiders have been a couple late turnovers away from winning both games, which is sloppy. I mean, the Titans should have won Week One as well, but you know they're they're a missed chip shot field goal from big bone randy from the, yeah the problem with the titans is is they lost to the the giants and the chargers or the raiders have lost to the the chargers and the cardinals who both could be potential playoff teams yeah yeah the raiders uh, losses look way more i wouldn't they're, say impressive, they're higher but they're quali- their quality teams. losses yeah yeah, yeah. Um, which is the typical college argument but it that, kind of yeah. applies too the titans got decimated by injuries this week too mm-hmm. which you know, and again, we mentioned Lewan might be out for the year. They've already lost Landry. I mean, Tannehill has not been great. Like, I don't know if they can right the ship, even if they win this game. I'm I'm going with the Raiders, but 
it it is like that's the crazy thing with the Titans. I feel like they could start zero and six and still win the division. <laughs> like it, it's just that dumb. Oh my god, that'd be pretty cool if they did that. <laughs> also, want to point out a tie in this game would be an all time funny. Oh, absolutely. Mm. <laughs> I'm not forcing myself not to pick it. A, not picking I'm not, it. I'm not going to force myself to pick a tie every week, but if I had to pick one for this week, it would be this game. Oh yeah. Um. Then we got a big a- NFC South game. Two teams coming off pretty devastating losses. Saints travel down to or travel up actually to Carolina to face the Panthers. Man. <sighs> I don't want to pick the Panthers wrong three weeks in a row, <laughs> but I really want to pick them for this game. I don't give me the Saints. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go. With, I'm gonna go with the Saints too. But this is one of those weird games where, like, I feel like the Panthers could somehow win this game in a blowout, but I also feel like the Saints could win in a blowout. I really don't know who to go with for this game, but the Saints have looked better. So, where did the Saints play Week One? Was it the Falcons? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's when they came back from being down 16 in the fourth because the Falcons just do that shit and they won. Huh. Oh, gosh. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the Saints were Falcons' incompetency away from being 0-2. Screw it. I'm going to try to be 3-0 and on wrong Panthers picks. Give me the Panthers. Oh, God. I'm going to be the single hand. I'm going to single-handedly drive the Panthers to 0-17. Also, picking them every week. <laughs> a bit unrelated, but shout out to the NFL for scheduling the Saints against three straight divisional opponents to start the season. Yeah. Meanwhile, the uh, the Jets have played three different AFC North teams to start their season. Yeah, I think because the Jags, I think, play the entire... Uh, they play the, the Chargers, the Raiders, and the Chiefs in three straight weeks. Or something like that. That's kind of weird. That's, um, yeah. Speaking of the AFC North, the Ravens travel to Foxborough to face off against the Patriots. What are we thinking here? I think the Ravens are going to win this one. Yeah, the I've Ravens. Made it. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, uh, okay. The Ravens' <laughs> offense is just rolling <laughs> these two weeks. I don't care that they lost. I mean, they scored 38 points. Um, so give me the Ravens here. I have made it my new mission to pick the Patriots in every single game, regardless of who they're playing. So even though I think the Raiders are going to, the Raiders, even Raiders. though I think the Ravens are going to win, I'm picking the Patriots anyway, because, you know, I feel like it. Yeah, and you know I, what? It also wouldn't surprise me if the Patriots win this game. Yep. Rain <laughs> game again. Yeah. Yes, please. <laughs> if it's a rain game, they're winning it. <laughs> I beg. So can't believe I'm saying this, but this game could be, for the lead in the NFC North, the Lions travel to Minnesota to play the Vikings. This could also have another game of the week potential. Oh, yeah. Give me the just Lions. Be, just because how frisky this. Yeah, the, I'm I'm going with the Lions as well. Fuck it. Um, Lions sweep. Let's go. Hell oh, that, yeah. That's never good. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lions, uh, they got to keep scoring 35 plus, right? Oh, yeah. Especially against the Vikings. Like, come on. I'm ready for some Dan Gamble sickos football. So excited. <laughs> All right, you got a divisional matchup. Yeah, big NFC East matchup. It's the Eagles travel to Washington to face the commies. Actually, they're going to Landover, Maryland. Oh, whatever. So, uh, it's the Carson Wentz <laughs> revenge game, though. So, And that is why I'm picking the commanders in this game. Oh, shit. Like, like I think the Eagles are the better team. And I it, again, it's one of those where it wouldn't shock me if they win. But they're going to Washington. And I'm sure Carson Wentz probably has a stick up his ass about the Eagles still and would love nothing more than to beat them by like 35 points. <sighs> and while I don't think it'll be by 35 points, I do see them winning this game. Give me the commanders in an upset. I'm going to pick the Eagles because they're rolling. There's yeah, some, I just It's too good of a pick to not go with them. I'm going to take the Eagles as well. I'm, I'm feeling them right now. Oh, baby. This could be an ugly game. (laughs) Once upon a time, this was a really good matchup, but it's the Chiefs head to Indy to play the Colts. Uh, I am locking the Chiefs. I was going to say, who's locking the Chiefs here? (laughs) I was like, somebody got to do it. Say no more. (laughs) Yeah. I I think I can just pencil us all in for the Chiefs here. (laughs) Yeah, just go ahead and do it. 
Uh, this this might be ugly. That's that's. <laughs> See, I feel like I feel like this one of those stupid games. Where like like you call it a trap game. I feel like this could be a trap game for the Chiefs, but I still think they'd win. Yeah. Unless Matt Ryan still got some magic left in him. Uh, like I think it'll. I think it could be a shockingly close game, but I still think the better team is going to end up winning the game. Why do we have to pick this next game? Oh, baby, <laughs> just, what a game this is. We got a barn murder oh, again. No barn first down part two. this one. This is disgusting. It's Texans <laughs> at Bears. I, I'm going to go out of my way to not watch this game. Uh, Lovey Smith revenge game, by the way. So I'm picking the Bears. Give me the, I just These teams are both just bad. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I need a coin. I don't want to pick this one. You know what? Give me a tie. Oh my god! I'm, I'm doing it again. Give me the tie, baby. No, no, no! Wait, wait, wait! Uh, okay, I'm gonna. Oh, I found a coin. Okay, I was gonna flip. You should pick the Texans, so everybody has a different pick. Yeah, fuck it. Give me nope. the Texans. But I imagine played. how funny it would be though if the Texans tie this game. If the three games, they're o one and two. <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny. I would love to see it. I want it. I really hope they they can get to a point where the record is one, two, and three. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> one, also, two, and three. For those wondering at home about me not trusting the coin, I haven't flipped the coin yet, so it doesn't count. So, oh <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Uh, this has trap game written all over it. It's Jaguars at Chargers. If ever, I'm gonna pick the was... Chargers, and here's why. The Chargers are 5-0 and against the Jaguars at home and have beaten them by two scores in every game. So give me the Chargers. Oh, I want to pick the Jags because they look frisky, but the Chargers, have they've never lost to the Jags at home. Why do I have a gut feeling about the Jaguars in this game? The Chargers I would love, go ahead and, I'd love for you to pick them. Somebody's got to have faith in them. I don't want to, the though. Chargers also have a very long and documented history at losing stupid ass games to terrible ass teams. Yeah. Which is not yeah. to say the Jaguars are a terrible ass team, but they have a long track record of doing this. And you know what? I think it's going to continue this weekend. Give me Trevor Lawrence and Doug oh, Peterson. God. Jags I... winning it, baby. Here's here I love this little stat line though between their record at, at the at the Chargers. Uh the Chargers have scored 33 at least, but no more than 39 against the Jaguars. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, I think I'm going to still go with the Chargers, but I would not be surprised in the slightest if they found a way to lose this game. Yeah, because they I think they've only lost like the only game the Chargers have lost to the Jags was in overtime in the infamous 2018 season. Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, and that was in Jacksonville. So. All but right. yeah. Anyway, another division thing going on. The Rams head to Arizona to face the Cardinals. Uh, a- NFC West is up for grabs right now. This is two teams that got much needed wins in week two. What do we think? Uh, give me the Rams. They don't look. They don't look like they're uh, in full swing. But uh, I don't think the Cardinals are anywhere close to being, you know, a full caliber team either. So. <laughs> Honestly, this this is the game I don't want to pick. Is they it's two teams that are coming off of playoff appearances that through two weeks, you know, have two wins that could have easily been losses, or one win that could have easily been a loss and one ugly loss. Yeah. Like, but the Rams have also had the Cardinals number recently, so just for that alone, that's gonna be my deciding factor here. Give me the Rams. Yeah, I'm gonna take the Rams as well. Um... I think their their defense is a lot better than the, the Cardinals, and I think they're just going to get after Kyler Murray. Um, big game here. It's uh, I know they met twice in 2020, and uh, it was an ass whooping both times. I don't remember if they played last year, but Aaron Rodgers leads his Packers into Tampa Bay, where they face Tom Brady's Buccaneers. This is a heavyweight matchup. This I feel is a like really this, interesting one. Well, I don't. Here's the thing: it's a heavyweight that's going to be over. That's going to be over like hyped in a sense, and this is going to be a low score again. 
because I don't know. It's Bucks defense versus, you know, new Packers receiving core. So I'm going to take the Packers. I think they're going to get after them. Plus the, like I was mentioning earlier, the Bucks have quite a few injuries. Um, mm-hmm. and I don't think they're going to lose to the Bucks three times in a row. I think the Bucks defense is going to carry them here, honestly. Like the Bucks are obviously banged up at wide receiver, but like the last time we saw Cole Beasley, if he ends up being activated for this game, he was still a pretty solid receiver. So oh, yeah. like they're not they're not just bringing some scrub in or anything like that. So I think the Bucks will find a way to pull it out, but this one could definitely go either way. I'm going to pick the Packers even though it's in Tampa. Oh baby, what a matchup. Ultimate I'm shitty good. bird matchup. Who's going to win? Good. I'm going to lock the, the Falcons. Did you no shot you just did that. I'm going to lock no the Falcons. There's no shot. Here is why. <laughs> so, the first two weeks have been losses, for sure. But what they do in those losses, they scored points. The Seahawks have not shown that they can score a lot of points. That is my philosophy. I'm locking the Falcons. So... That's that's a bold lock. And the Falcons play, and the, it's the Saints and the Rams, and they had a chance to win both those games. So it's a bold lock, but I can't say I disagree with it. I mean, um, the Falcons, yeah, they've played both. I mean, they should have won the first game, but yeah, they've they've played two very close games. They can they can find themselves into a game. They can stay in it, and they're going up against a team that is really really bad on the offensive side of the ball. So. I'm not going to lock them, but I do think the Falcons... And they're missing them. their Jamal Adams on the defense, so... Yeah. Out yeah, for I'm the year, yeah. I will be taking the Falcons as well. Um, Super Bowl uh, 29 rematch, I believe. Uh, or no, sorry, Super Bowl 19 rematch. 49ers at Broncos. This is a weird game to pick as well. So, the... 49ers Seahawks were always pretty close games while Russell Wilson was there. Um, I'm gonna take the 49ers because I think they're just gonna roll. I think the the Broncos have too many offensive issues right now. Uh, I'm gonna do the same and pick the 49ers on that. You know what? Fuck it. Lock the 49ers. Oh, I'm feeling it. <laughs> we have some interesting locks this week. Yeah. It's a weird one, like. My personal feeling was if Trey Lance was starting this game, I would have picked the Broncos. But now that Jimmy G is playing, I'm picking the Niners. Which is not to say that Trey Lance is a bad quarterback, but it would have been his first primetime game, and I don't think it would have gone that well. But Jimmy G is a proven record. You know what he can do. You know what he's capable of. So, Niners it is. And finally, uh, your annually or your annual nationally televised Cowboys at Giants game. Uh, let Cooper rush. Go Cowboys. Hmm. It's going to be a terrible I... pick in retrospect, but I don't care. <laughs> so, ooh. here's my thing. I've picked against the Giants two weeks in a row and lost. If I pick the Giants this week, does this mean they'll lose? I mean, I'd appreciate it if you did that. Okay, I'll pick the Giants then. All right, cool. <laughs> you know what? I am two for two when picking the Giants correctly this season. Make it three for three, baby. Uh, Give me the New York football Giants. <laughs> if they lead this division with the Eagles after this week, I'm going to throw things. All right, let's look at... Yeah, so we got some... Some 1v2. So Dewey's the only Browns pick. I'm the only Jets pick. Dewey's also the only Patriots and Commanders pick. And Jaguars pick. And Bucks pick. <laughs> it's Dewey versus the world this week for pickups. It was That and, was me last week. So And a tie, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was me last week with picking a couple weird ones. So it might work out. Oh, yeah, gosh. I didn't do that good last week. So I'm going Scorched Earth this week. We ball. That's the strategy. Yeah, I think the look at the difference between me and Matt is like four games we picked differently. Yeah, <laughs> so, <pretty much. laughs> um, contrarian is the name of the game. It's the only way to play. And uh, that was Oof Sides. Uh, week two's in the books. Week three, look forward to it. Uh, no.
Any closing thoughts, y'all? Uh, uh, Mac Ten is superior. <laughs> <laughs> Common Patriots L. <laughs> I know the Jaguars fan ain't talking about a common L. <laughs> That's insane. Uh, yeah, but at least we know how to take an L. Yeah, you know who you lost to the last time you made the playoffs? <laughs> <laughs> and you know who you lost to in the playoffs the Miles last Jack, time you made the playoffs Miles before Jack that one? Down. Miles Jack was down. <laughs> I, want, I want to see him in court. <laughs> Give me the NFL rep the court. And on that note, uh, for all the boys here at Eastside, it's JTN2. See you next time.